I have not had lunch yet. I am relying on chocolate fingers to get me through this video. Unicorns let us cause my feet are cold. Hey guys, it's Jamie and welcome to another video. Are you ready to learn some life hacks? Yay. So being trans can be a really difficult thing to deal with and right at the beginning when you're figuring things out and just after you figure things out and just everything in the beginning of a transition can be incredibly confusing, or at least it was for me. Personally, I just had no idea who to talk to, where to go, what to do, what the next steps were, just anything really. I was so confused about what I needed to do. So basically, I knew absolutely nothing and everything I learned was through trial and error and Googling, a lot of Googling and also a lot of errors. So I have put together some tips today for you guys. Roll trans-specific life hacks. First up, when you're ready. Figuring out that you're trans or even thinking that you might be trans can be a full-on roller coaster of emotions and just confusion. So take things at your own pace. I would really recommend getting things sorted in your own head before talking to other people, or maybe talking to other people will help you get things sorted. Try writing things down about how you're feeling and just work through everything. I personally found that it helped to have things worked out in my own head before telling other people because it made me feel a bit more confident and more sure of what I was saying and it made me know better how to explain it. Also, do not feel rushed whatsoever to know straight away what is going on. If you have some confusions over your gender identity or anything, you don't need to figure it out straight away. You don't even need to figure it out at all. So just go with what is right for you. Same goes for coming out. Even once you know what's going on and you feel like the next step would be to tell people, wait until you feel ready to do so. Second, the little things. Once you know what's what and what you want to do, and what, what, what? <laughs> Transitioning can feel like a right slug of a process. It can be very slow. There can be a lot of challenges along the way. So it really helps to take note and just enjoy and appreciate the small things that can come up. A new haircut there, some different clothes. It can really make a huge difference to how you're feeling and also how you're perceived by others in terms of being read as male or not. I would recommend getting a haircut that you like but that also suits your face. So like for me, shaving all my hair off would not suit me but having slightly longer hair I feel suits me a lot better. So just go with what works for your face shape. Number three, connect with others. This really ties into the fact that support is such an important thing to have when you're transitioning and it can make the world of difference, it really can. So if you think it might help you and you do wanna to talk to some people, get in touch with local trans or LGBT plus groups in your area or ones that are online, forums, blog sites, anything like Facebook groups, just find places where you can talk to other people in the same or similar situation as you. If you don't feel ready to talk to other people, even just watching YouTube videos can be really helpful. Hello. Basically just knowing you're not alone and knowing that there is support out there even if it's not directly aimed at you. So yeah, do some little things, connect with other people in whatever way you're comfortable with to remind you of the support that is out there. Number four, the where, what and how of binding. Binding is a big confusing mess and I found it about as difficult to decipher and understand what was going on as it is to actually put a binder on. On that note, try pulling a binder up put your legs through the head hole and then put the things over your shoulder, give that a go if pulling it over your head isn't working for you. The most important thing is be safe with binding. Stick to the guidelines on how long you should wear it for, get the correct size for you. It's better to get it a little bit big than a little bit small. It is not good to get a binder that is too small. Buy an official binder if you can afford one. If you can't afford one, try and do safe DIY things to tide you over in the meantime, like wearing a sports bra and layering. Do not use tape or anything that is going to restrict your breathing. In terms of buying an official one, I would recommend G2CB or GC2B, G2CB. Hold on, I want to say the name correctly. I will just check this for you guys. GC2B and Underworks as well, I would recommend too. Also, personally, a great hack I found with binding is I bought Underworks tri-tops, but I really struggled with getting them on and off. And if I wanted to take a break, it was a nightmare. Like if I was at college and it was lunchtime, and I wanted to take it off for a bit, just couldn't. So what I did is I had the binder, so imagine like a little tank top, tank top, tank top, and I cut up one edge to the armhole down to the main hole that you put your body in. <laughs> Oh man. And I got some big bits of like Velcro and I sewed that in either side so that then basically instead of having to pull it over I just popped it on one side and then I could Velcro it up. That meant that like 
lunchtime at college, I could sit just in a room with my friends and I could undo it. And then just two seconds to do it back up before lunch ended, that kind of thing. Just makes it much easier, like quick release. Our final point on binding is that if you want to hide the fact that you're binding, you don't want everybody to know, avoid white t-shirts, v-necks and scoop neck things as you'll be able to see the binder or most binders you'll be able to see them through it. There are skin coloured binders now, there didn't used to be. I think they're fantastic, so definitely look into those as well. If you're really self-conscious that your chest isn't completely flat and it really doesn't need to be, trust me, but if you can't get past that and it's making you feel really uncomfortable, try wearing baggier t-shirts, like layering with a shirt over the top or a jumper or a zipped hoodie or something like that. Layers can really work for you and so can wearing baggy tops. Yeah, I think that's it on binding. Number five, to pack or not to pack? That is the question. This would also be a lot better if I actually owned a packer and could just have like a little silicone penis sitting on my hand, but unfortunately I don't. Packing is where you wear something in your underpants to create a penis-like bulge. This can be done with like a proper like packer, which is a silicone or something else, squidgy penis. But you can also do it DIY with just socks or something. I've heard of some people filling like condoms with gel, but that sounds a little bit risky. But yeah, there's like options that you can do with stuff at home if you don't want to buy a packer or you can't afford one right now. In my experience and reading the experiences of others, bigger is really not best. And you should go for a size that works for like your height and your build and what kind of things you wear. Like if you wear skinny jeans, you do not want to go for an eight inch long packer. Wearing really big packers can lead to some awkward situations that are best to avoid. You can even try with socks first to see what kind of size works for you and like just add more socks or make it longer or something to create different sizes and try it out before you buy. Number six. Time of the month, Shark Week, Aunt Flo. Whatever you call it, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about right now, and I'm sure that you understand and relate to how horrible it can be. Just know that there are different options out there for when the time occurs. So it's not just pads, it's not just tampons, but those are two of your options. But there's also menstrual cups, which you don't need to think about as much during the day and just clean them out at the end of the day. And there's also period pants like Thinks underwear, where it's literally absorbent underwear that you just wear with nothing else on, unless Unless you're particularly heavy you might need to pair it with a tampon but there are different things out there if your current thing that you use makes you feel uncomfortable there might be things out there that make you feel slightly more comfortable about it i'm not saying you're ever going to be comfortable just based on what you use but it might help a little bit also if you're in public and you might need to change whatever you're wearing like a pad or a tampon in a public bathroom if you are using the men's bathroom I would recommend taking like a little bag with you, like a little nappy bag or something, because there are not bins in the stalls. So it just gives you somewhere to wrap it up and then you can pop it in your rucksack or your pocket. I know it's not preferable, but just in case you get stuck in that situation, have a little something with you that you can put it in. If you want to take tea, testosterone will pretty much always stop periods at some point, as long as your levels are high enough. If you've been on tea for a while and they're still not stopping, do get that checked out. But if tea is a while off and you're really struggling to cope with your time of the month, do go speak to your doctor about whether there are options available to you. Number seven, who to talk to. This is something that I was stuck on for ages. I was like, yes, I'm trans. I know it. I'm out to people. I want testosterone, what? Well, what do I do? Unfortunately, in terms of my advice here, I can only help you guys in the UK. I don't know the process in other places of the world, but what I would recommend doing is if, you know, where you live, look and see if there are local trans groups that meet up and you can go speak to people there, see if there's groups online or just put posts online on blogs and stuff and try and find people who are from the same area as you and see what the process is like. But if you're in the UK, there are two main pathways to accessing hormones and surgery. That's the NHS and private. If you go through the NHS, you don't have to pay for appointments, but the wait lists are much longer and you can't self-refer. The first step is going to speak to your GP and asking for a referral to your closest gender identity clinic. Going privately, you will need to pay for the appointments, but the wait lists are much shorter. So if this sounds like an option for you, check out Gender Care on Google. And finally, number eight. Yes, that is eight, good. There is more than one option when it comes to taking tea. If you're scared of needles, 
Don't worry, there is a gel option you can do. It is slightly more annoying because you have to like rub it in daily, but I can guarantee you totally needle free, apart from when you need to get your blood test taken. But that's not very often, so you're good. But then if you travel a lot and you don't want to take medication with you, or if you don't like the idea of self-injecting or having to go to the doctor's surgery every two weeks or something, there is a slow release type of testosterone called libido. You only need to get that injected every 12 weeks, but you do typically need to go to the nurse to get this injected. If you are okay with self-injecting or taking medication with you, if you go abroad quite a lot, then there is a quicker release type such as sustenin, which is normally injected I think every two weeks sometimes it's three or four weeks it just depends on your dose and your levels and everything like that and yeah you can learn to do that yourself so you don't always have to go to the what's it called doctors to the nurse so yeah, those are all my trans guy life hacks. I hope that some of them can be helpful to you guys. It is not an exhaustive list. This, these are just the main ones. If I think of many more, I will make a part two. I just didn't want this to be super long. So I wanted to go for like the really like standout ones. If you guys have any other hacks or just general advice for other people, then please do leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, maybe think about giving it a thumbs up and subscribing, but no pressure. Uh, I think that's everything. As always, thank you so much for watching, guys. Much love. See you next time. Bye. Say bye, kitty.